the Apache web server. In this nugget, we're going to talk about the Apache web server. We'll look in depth at the Apache configuration file, and we'll learn how to restrict access to your web server, and we'll also talk briefly about the login capabilities that are built into Apache. So let's get started. Let's start by talking about the Apache web server, and the latest version of Apache that's out there is version 2.0. Now, I recently read on the internet a survey that said that 65% of all the web servers out there are using Apache. Okay, now that's a pretty strong statement, right? Because this is a piece of free software, but it shows just how important Apache has become in the, the world of the internet. Okay, and uh, Netcraft is kind of a cool website. You can go on there and uh, look at various domains out there on the internet like Microsoft.com or Yahoo or Google or whatever. And it, it does a little probe of the websites and it tells you uh, what web server they're using and also what the underlying operating system they're using if it can determine that information. Okay, so uh, you know, so this just says Apache is an important uh, piece of software, especially for Linux. Most of the Linux people, most of the servers out there that are running Linux are running Apache to go along with it. But Apache 2.0 has made a lot of modifications so that it will run well on other platforms besides Linux. Now we did an installation of Apache back in the introductory videos, so I'm not going to walk you through in a whole installation of Apache, but I just wanted to refresh your memory as to what the packages are that you can use or that you can install to have like the full kit and caboodle with re relating to Apache. Okay, and these are all RPMs, so you'd have to install all these RPMs to have the full deal. Okay, first one here is HTTPD, and that's the actual web server itself. HTTPD-devel is for uh, development tools for the web server, so you can do things like compile in new modules and stuff. Uh, Red Hat Config HTTPD, this is a graphical user interface to help with the configuration of the web server. Uh, HTTPD-manual, HTTPD uh, this is for documentation for the web server. And if you install this RPM, the documentation is going to live in slash var, slash www, slash html, slash manual. Uh, Mod Perl and Mod Python are both language interpreters uh, for the respective languages for Apache. So this is a Perl interpreter for Apache, and this is a Python interpreter for Apache. Uh, Mod SSL is, uh, allows you to support encryption, so you can use protocols like Secure HTTP. Um, Autoconf uh, is for creating scripts. Uh, this is for make files, and LibTool is just some generic libraries, some shared libraries that you're going to need uh, for Apache. Okay, so there's the packages that you'll install all those packages if you want the full uh, functioning version of Apache. Now in terms of starting and stopping Apache, there's two ways, two basic ways that you can do this. One is you can do it manually from the command line and the other way is you can do it automatically. So when your system boots up to a particular run level, uh, Apache will start automatically. So let's talk about manually first. Uh, the first way to do this is you can execute this command slash etsy slash rc.d slash init.d slash httpd space start okay and this will start up the HTTP daemon okay which is the web server and there's any number of directives that you can use here there's start there's stop there's restart there's also reload which is a good one uh, that will actually restart uh, or force the uh, web server to reread its configuration file but it doesn't ever uh, stop uh, the web server so if it, this is a web server in some production environment that you don't want to shut down but you've made a change to a configuration file that you want uh, the web server to use you can just just say here, uh, reload, okay, and that's also sometimes called hupping a web server. Uh, another way that you can do this exact same thing is by using the Red Hat Linux service command. So here I can say service space httpd space start, and that will do the exact same thing as above. And again, there's a whole slew of directives here, start, stop, restart, reload, and so on. Okay, so that's how you can do it manually with either one of those commands. To do it automatically, what you have to do is you have to change uh, the, uh, the uh, services that are started automatically at a particular run level. One way to uh, include HTTPD as a service that gets started at a particular run level is you use the check config command. So chk config. And here I'm giving an example of uh, how to include HTTPD uh, to start automatically at level 5. So I say minus minus level space 5 HTTPD space on. So this turns on that daemon uh, when the system boots into run level 5. 
Okay. If I wanted this to go into run levels 3 and 5, I'd say minus minus level space 3, 5. And the 3 and 5 would be right next to each other with no spaces. And that would turn the daemon on whenever the system boots into run level 3 or 5. Okay. Now, so if, if it's some sort of um, production machine and you're not doing anything else on the machine, then you should probably just start it up and run level 3, right? You don't need any sort of X Windows interface eating up memory or, or CPU time, anything like that. So you'll just start it in sort of the, the most basic run level that you can, like run level 3, and then the daemon will start automatically at that run level. Okay, uh, th another way to do this exact same thing here is to use the graphical user interface tool, Red Hat-config-services, which we've used earlier in this series uh, for configuring some other service to start automatically. And then what you do is you pick a particular run level, like run level 5, and you scroll down the list looking for uh, Apache to, to check that box so that that will start up. Actually, you're not looking for Apache, the, the, the word Apache, you're looking for HTTPD, right? That's the name of the service service that you're starting when you're starting and stopping Apache. Okay, so now let's move out to the Linux screen and look at some of the configuration files and some of the other uh, stuff related to Apache. Then we'll come back to the whiteboard uh, again to talk about uh, restricting access to your web server uh, using Apache. Well, let's look at the configuration file for the Apache web server. Uh, that's in the Etsy directory under HTTPD, under conf, uh, and the file is called httpd.conf. Okay, so this configuration file you'll see is like the most well-commented configuration file you'll ever see. Um, it's got a detailed description for every single uh, variable that's set or every single directive that's set. It has a detailed description of what it is just above the setting of that particular variable. So in this case, server root equals uh, Etsy HTTPD. Well, what's server root? Well, here it tells you server root is the top of the directory tree under which the server's configuration files, error files, and log files are all kept. So this tells you where to look uh, under, uh, where to look for uh, configuration files, error files, and log files. And we found uh, the configure file, configuration files under Etsy HTTPD slash conf. Okay. So, so uh, again, it's telling you exactly what's going on. Notice here it says do not add a slash at the end of the directory path. That's important. It tells you that so that, that makes make sure that when you edit this, if you wanted to change what the server root was, you don't put a slash at the end. Okay, so uh, as we page down here, you'll see all sorts of uh, variables. If you want to experiment or uh, investigate what all these things are, you know, just read uh, the descriptions and they tell you pretty much what they are. All these max alive requests, these keep alive uh, timeouts and keep alive requests have to do with persistent connections on your web server. Um, if we page down farther here, you'll see listen. This is a variable telling you uh, where the Apache web server is listening for traffic. So it's listening on any machine, colon 80, which says port 80 on any machine. That's where it's listening for traffic. Okay, uh, as we page down farther here, you'll see a whole bunch of modules get loaded. So these are all sort of like add-ons to the Apache web server. Um, if you're a developer, you can compile in other modules to, you know, to customize the web server for your installation, and then you would load the module in this section here. Okay, and as we go down, um, here's another nice thing about the configuration file. Extended status, okay. This variable here says it controls whether Apache will generate full status information when extended status is on or just basic information when extended status is off. Okay, notice here it says the default is off. But it gives you the command to actually turn it on. It says extended status on. It just leaves it commented out. All these lines that start with a sharp sign here are comments that are not actually executed. So if I came through here and I said, you know, I do want that full status information, all I have to go, all I have to do is delete that sharp sign or that hash mark at the beginning of the line to turn that on. So not only do they tell me what all the variables mean, they actually, you know, tell, show me how to set them, but they just leave it commented out. So it's very easy for me to set and change the uh, values of these variables without even typing anything, just, just deleting the hash marks. Okay, another nice feature of the, uh, of the configuration file. Here's another important fact, is that the user and the group that are running the Apache web server are both set to Apache. Okay, now w what does this mean? This means that the Apache web server is running and the controlling process, the owner of the, the process is Apache itself. Okay, we've created this user on our machine called Apache and that's who's running the web server. Now the user Apache and the group Apache have a very limited set of privileges. They have enough privileges so that they can do all the things necessary for the Apache web server, but they can't do other stuff. 
Okay, and here's why this is good. Because just say you had a script on your web page that um, went awry, either because you know you wrote it incorrectly or somebody's cracked into your system and altered the script somehow. Okay, if that script was actually running as like the root user, then the potential danger is a lot greater. Okay, if the script was running wild, uh, deleting files, for instance, or something like that, and it was running as the root user, well, nothing would stop it because the root user has full privileges. But if it's running wild as the user Apache, um, then, then not a lot's going to happen because Apache doesn't really have that many privileges. Okay, so it's important to leave these both set to Apache. Do not change them to something like root, for instance. Okay, if we page down, you'll see a server admin. This is the email address of the administrator of the server. A server name, it's just set to localhost by default. But if you had a domain name here like uh, www.cbtnuggets.com, that's what you would write here under server name. Okay, um, as we go down a little farther here, I want to show you a couple other things. Document root, this is where your HTML documents will live, slash var, slash www slash HTML. Okay, if you want to change that, you can alter this address again. Make sure you don't have a slash on the end of that uh, particular listing um, to make sure that, that it goes to the right directory. All right, well, now I've paged way down in httpd.conf here, uh, down like 20 some pages of stuff. Um, to get to this section, because we're going to move back out to the whiteboard to talk about this in more detail, I just wanted to give you a little glimpse of, of what goes on down here at the bottom and what, what's actually happening. What we're doing down here at the bottom of the configuration file is restricting access to our web server in some way or another. We're either restricting access based on uh, you know what machines can access these uh, directories that we're we're talking about, or we're going to uh, restrict what kinds of operations can be done in these directories. And you'll see in more detail once I explain all the various options and things like that when we go back out to the whiteboard exactly what's going on here. I just want to give you the idea here of what, just the general idea of what's going on. So what we're doing is for a, a particular directory, we're setting options that say what is allowed in this directory. Okay, and down here for the var uh, www.html directory. Okay, again, we have a set of options set, and then we have uh, an allow field. So we're saying allow access from all machines, and then we've got this order field that says allow and then deny. Okay, and I'm going to explain what all this means in a minute, but see how it's set up that for a particular directory, we have a set of options for that particular directory. If I page down farther, uh, you'll see. Uh, the var www cgi bin directory. So the place where I would put uh, scripts, CGI scripts on my system would go into this particular folder and then I can uh, restrict access to that folder again either by machines, what machines are allowed to execute those scripts or I could say whether scripts can even be executed in that directory at all. That sort of thing. Okay, so now let's move back out to the whiteboard, talk about this stuff in more detail, and you'll see what we're trying to get across here. And I'm going to show you how to do uh, some basic um, access restrictions on your web server. All right, let's continue talking about access restrictions in Apache. And what we're doing here is we're defining what services are allowed on a directory by directory basis. Okay, so like we just saw in the configuration file a minute ago, we define for a particular directory what services we want to allow on that directory. And then uh, those rules apply recursively from the parent directory on down, unless we make a specific rule for some particular subdirectory. Okay, so uh, the, the, what we saw in that configuration file a minute ago was something like options follow sim links or options in indexes or something like that. So let me explain what the five valid fields are for the options directive and then, uh, then we'll talk about other ways to restrict access. Okay, so indexes here, what this will do, if options indexes is set for a particular directory, then uh, if you give, um, if you try to pull up some web page like www.redhat.com slash files, okay, I'm just making this up off the top of my head. So if you try to pull up that web page, it's not actually an HTML page that I've, that I've asked for. I've said redhat.com slash files. I'm asking for a particular directory. Well, what the web server will do will look for index.html by default in that particular directory. If index.html does not exist in that directory and the indexes uh, option is set here, if I say option indexes, then the web server will do a directory listing of that particular directory to help the user navigate and find the files that he's looking for. 
Okay, if options includes is set, that means that server side includes are allowed in this directory. A server side include is just something that gives a little bit of dynamic content to an HTML page, like uh, the current date or the current time or something like that. Okay, and uh, you know it's not a full on like CGI script, uh, but it is it, does, it is a little bit of dynamic content, and that is allowed if it says options includes on a particular directory. Uh, follow sim links it means that the user uh, that's on the web page can follow a symbolic link to some other directory uh, you should be careful if you set this you should be aware of where all your sim links are going uh, in your uh, document route there where where your web pages are make sure you know where all the sim links are going because if somebody can follow sim links if you set this option then they might be able to get to some other uh, part of the file system that you didn't intend them to be able to get to uh, exec CGI says that you can execute CGI scripts for this particular directory. And multi views just has to do with, um, there's this weird thing about if a particular document isn't there or it can't be found, then the server tries to figure out which document is, is the best one to show you. Okay, if you want help uh, configuring this, uh, look into the mod negotiations module or the uh, Apache manual talking about mod negotiations. Okay, so in addition to these five things here, you can also set options directives as all or none. Okay, none is obvious, none of these are included. All includes the first four. Multi views is something separate. You have to explicitly uh, you say that you want uh, that included. Uh, all does not include that by default. Okay, so, uh, so if you say all, you'll get all four of these enabled for your particular directory. Now this is one way to restrict access. Another way to restrict access is with the allow and deny qualifiers. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I've like put a little snippet of, uh, of, of the configuration file, what I would include in the configuration file if I was trying to allow access from a particular domain. So the way this starts is by saying order, deny, allow. So this says process the deny fields first, then process the allow fields. So here I'm saying deny from all, allow from cbtnuggets.com. So this is what this is doing in effect is saying uh, deny all traffic. Nobody can look at this web page unless they're from the cbtnuggets.com domain. Okay, so uh, that's the way you can set this up. If you switch the order here, if you say order, allow, deny, then the allow parts are done first and then the deny parts are done second. And the deny part, if I just said allow from cbtnuggets.com, deny from all, then nobody would be able to access my system because the deny thing would take precedence because that's the second thing I checked. Okay, so that's, that's kind of the way this is working. Uh, another way to restrict access to your system. And one last way I want to talk about restricting access is using passwords to restrict access. So we're not talking about the same passwords that you would use to log into the system. We're going to create a separate password file. Uh, it's going to have a similar structure to Etsy password, but it's uh, going to be specifically for uh, the, we the web server. Okay, so the way that we create this password file is we say ht password, P A S S W D, minus C for create. Then we create the file name, here I've called it web users, and then the username uh, is Perry. Okay, once I type this command in, then I'm going to be prompted for a password for Perry. I would type that in. It would, it would show up as just blank characters. And then uh, it would then put an encrypted version of that password in this web users file. Okay, so uh, then if I want to add more people to this file, I would say HD password. I would leave out the minus C because this was creating that file. I would just say HD password web users uh, Joe. Okay, and then Joe, and then I type a password for Joe, and then Joe would also have an entry in the web users uh, password file. Okay, so that's the first step is creating the actual password file. And then to get Apache to use this file, what we would do is we would add this section here to the particular directory that we're trying to restrict access to with passwords. So off name is just, you know, some authentic, it's just some name of the particular uh, thing that we're trying to protect. Uh, the auth type is basic. Uh, we're not doing anything fancy here. There's other auth authentication types and you can read about those in the Apache uh, manual if you so choose. Uh, then the auth user file, uh, we s give the full path name to the actual file and we've called that web users. That's the same name we gave up here in the HT password command. And then we say require valid user. 
Okay, so this is saying I uh, require that a user can get validated. So when you go to access some particular directory, then uh, that that you know that we've applied these rules to, then what it's going to do is it's going to prompt you for a username and a password. You've got to give a valid username and password that's in this web user's uh, password file. And if you do that, and then you've met the requirements, and then you'll be able to see the stuff in that particular directory or see the file that you asked for in that directory. Okay, so that's another, yet another way to restrict access to your web server using passwords. There is actually one more way that I want to talk about restricting access to your web server, and that's by using a combination of the allow override directive and what we call .ht access files. Okay, so let's look at an example here. This is the best way that I can explain this is via an example. And this would be a listing in the Etsy H or the, the httpd.com file that we were just looking at on the Linux screen a few minutes ago. This is the directory by directory restrictions that we've been talking about. So for a particular directory that I've listed here, I've said options none. Okay. Now what this means is that in this directory, in any subdirectory of this directory, I can't have uh, CGI scripts be executed. I can't have server-side includes, that sort of thing. Okay. And I've also said here, allow override none. All right. So that means that this rule here, options none, cannot be overridden by anything else. Okay, so that's that's like what we understand already. All right, but if I use a different directive here, other than allow override none, if I said something like allow override options, for instance, then what this is saying is that I am allowing uh, people, or I am allowing this rule, options none, to be overridden by rules in a local .ht access file. So let's pick a subdirectory here. Let's say I've got the subdirectory var dub 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 uh, html slash perry. Okay. Well, in this directory, if I've got this allow override options directive set in httpd.com, then in this particular subdirectory, I can create a file called htaccess. Okay. And in that particular file, I can say something like uh, options includes. Okay. Now what this would say is that I am allowing server side includes in the Perry subdirectory of var www html and all subdirectories of this Perry directory. Okay. So this file then sort of takes precedence over httpd.conf because I've said uh, you can uh, I'm allowing overrides of the options directive that I just set. Okay. Now what's what what's the effect of this? What's the purpose of this? Well, Presumably, um, in this example here, Perry is my directory in like the web space. Okay, so this is where all the uh, web files will go under var www html, and maybe I've set aside a bunch of directories for Perry, Joe, Bob, whoever, as their personal directories, so they can have their own space on the web server. Okay, so I would have ownership of this directory. So I would also have ownership and writing capabilities to my local .ht access file so I can set up my particular subdirectory however I want. Okay, so uh, this is nice because then the users get some control over how their particular subdirectories are, uh, you know, what capabilities they have, whether they all have server side includes, whether they can execute CGI scripts, that sort of thing. Okay, so that's a reason that people might want to use .ht access files. Okay, but there's a real problem here or, or a caution. Okay, so beware. Using these .ht access files, um, what this can do is it can actually end up impacting server performance. Okay, so I'm going to say it can cause a performance hit. All right, and this is why it can cause a performance hit. Because if I allow these options to be overridden in httpd.conf, then any time I do any sort of an access to some subdirectory of the Perry directory, for instance, I've got to look in that particular directory for an ht access file to see if this particular option is allowed. Okay, for example, say there's a server side include in Perry slash work slash whatever slash whatever, and way down in some subdirectory I do a server side include. Well then the, the web server's got to look in that directory for an ht access file that allows uh, includes to be done. If it's not in that directory, then it has to go up a level 
and look for an HD access file in that directory. And if it's not there, it would have to go up a level and look for a .hd access file in that directory. If it doesn't find any HD access files up to here, and then there's this rule that takes place uh, for var www.html, then this would take precedence, and server-side include would not allow to be done. But if it finds an HD access file along the way up this directory tree, say in the Perry directory, that allows server-side includes, then the web server would let that server-side include happen, and then uh, you know it, it would just happen and boom, it's done. Okay. But the amount of work that had to be done to allow that server-side include was looking in all these various directories uh, and trying to determine which rule is taking precedence here. Okay, so it can cause a performance hit if there's lots and lots of these .ht access files. Okay, and the only reason that you would ever really do this is like if you were an ISP, okay, and uh, you had all these different individuals out there on your ISP that wanted uh, different rules for each of their particular directories. So you set up some basic rules in the httpd.com file that they can't touch, they can't edit this file or, or, or write to this file, and so if they want to change the permissions or the capabilities of their particular uh, individual space on the web server, then this is the way to do it, is via HD access files, but it can really cause a performance hit, so you shouldn't do it in any cases except, uh, you know, extreme cases that you absolutely need this control. Okay, so uh, that's now that is the last way that I want to talk about restricting access to your web server, and now let's talk about logging capabilities of Apache. All right, so here we are back on the Linux screen, and we're in the httpd.comp file again, and we're looking at the section of the file that refers to logging. Okay, so logging just means the information that we're keeping about activity on our web server. Okay, the first directive here is error log, and that just tells me the location of the error log, slash var, slash log, slash httpd, slash error log. Okay, then and the next directive is an important one. This is the log level. Okay, so this is saying that what type of messages should go into the error log, all right? And there's all these categories of messages, debug, info, notice, warn, error, crit for critical, alert, and emerge for emergency. Okay, so basically as we, you know, we pick log level warning, what that means is that anything with a warn, an error, a crit, an alert, or an emergency level would be logged to our error log. Okay, but things like with debug, info, or notice levels would not be put into the error log. Okay, and if you do put, you know, if you do loosen this restriction from warn to notice, for, exa for, for example, then uh, the number of messages in your error log will increase because more messages meet this uh, looser criteria. Okay, so that's why they say it controls the number of messages logged to the error log. All right, but the most typical, the two most typical values for a log level would either be warn or error on, on web servers that I've seen. Okay, so that's for the error log. Now, the other thing here that they've got is a set of log formats. Okay, and this looks like a big bunch of gobbledygook. Okay, a bunch of percent signs and letters and things like that. But basically, what you should get out of this is that there's this log format and it's called combined. There's another log format called common. There's another log format called referrer, and there's another log format called agent. Okay, if we want to use one of these formats, then down below here, let me just page down a little. You'll see for our custom log for our particular installation, which is in the log slash access log log is what it's going to be called. And notice there's no uh, leading slash here. So this is saying using the basic root of our, uh, of our server, which is slash etsy slash httpd, then it would be slash log slash access log. That's where that would be kept. We're using the combined format for that access log, which says we're using this line from above. And each line in the access log will have this format. Okay, now what does this format mean? Well, each of these things means a particular item is logged to our particular log file. So percent %h would mean uh, the remote host is there. Percent %l would be uh, the remote log name. Percent %u would be the username that they use if this was an authenticated part of the web server. So if they had to type a username and a password, percent %u will be the username that they use to get in. Uh, percent %t is the time. Okay, so each of these things means something. There's a whole bunch of other uh, 
other options that we could put inside of the quotes here. Uh, we could put in, um, you know, percent A for the remote IP address and things like that. Okay, there's just all sorts of information we can keep track of. And if you want to add something uh, to keep track of it, you know, add it into this particular format. And then down here, uh, when it says custom logs, we're using the combined format. If that's if you added something to the combined log format here, it will begin to show up in your actual access logs. Okay. Um, if you want to see the whole list of different uh, items that you can put into a log file, uh, then you uh, refer to the Apache manual. They've got the whole list there. Refer to a book about Apache or something like that. And there's just a whole slew of different pieces of information that you can put into that log file. All right, well, that wraps up our discussion about log files. Now let's just wrap up this nugget. All right, well, it's time to wrap up our nugget on the Apache web server. Uh, we talked quite a bit about the configuration file for the Apache web server, which is located in this directory, and the file is called httpd.conf. Okay. We talked about the rules and the directives in this particular configuration file so that we could restrict the access to our web server, restrict the capabilities of our web server. So we could restrict the access to our web server from you know, certain machines. We talked about the allow and deny directives so that we could allow access only from you know, our, our particular company or something like that. We also talked about restricting the capabilities of our web server, whether the web server could run CGI scripts or server side includes on a directory by directory basis. Okay, so that in the comp file there was an entry for each directory and the kinds of things that could be done in each of those directories. We also talked about using authentication to restrict access. So we could make a particular part of our web server, directory on our web server, uh, accessible only to people that, m that had a username and password that we set up. Okay, and so this is another way to restrict access. We also talked about the .ht access files and overriding the uh, option set in httpd.conf. And I told you that you know while that is a, a, a valid measure that it can actually work, um, it's not necessarily a good way to go about things because of performance reasons. And finally, we just talked briefly about logging and the types of information uh, that you can uh, have put into your log file. Well, I hope you found this nugget informative, and thanks for watching.